welcome back to my channel, I'm the City Witch. Today's video is a Q&A about myself. The reason I'm doing this video is because I've been receiving a lot of emails asking me questions about myself, my spirituality, my path, um, my witchcraft. So I just thought that I'd put it into a video and answer as many of your questions as I possibly can. I have a clipboard in front of me with all the questions on you've asked me. There are 11 for this video. I apologise if I haven't got round to answering your question if you've asked me one. If you pop it in the comments below, I will try my best to either answer it as a comment or pop it in my next video that I do as a Q&A. If you have any more questions about witchcraft or anything you want me to elaborate on, again, just leave me a comment below. If I answer one of these questions and I'm a little bit vague, guys, it's because it might be a bit too personal, the question. I'm trying not to put too much details and information about myself out in publicly online because when you're online guys you're in the public eye and there obviously are people out there that can get jealous about your success and your business and your your witchcraft there aren't always nice witches watching these videos which is what I'm trying to say so I make sure to protect myself I always have um, spells going in the background I always have special protective incense going I always have my protection candle burning every time I do a video I always cast spells to protect myself I always follow a routine on magical hygiene which is something I recommend that everybody do regardless of whether you're online or not and if you are in the witchy world try to keep your own information to a minimum because you don't want people figuring out too much about you and using that information against you. So if I do answer a question vaguely, that is why guys. I just want you to understand that a little bit and you know, respect that I'm protecting myself. But I'll do my best to answer them. So as I say, there's 11 questions today. And the first question that you've asked me is, do you consider yourself to be a stereotypical witch? Um, I guess that depends what you mean by stereotypical. Do I own a broom? Yes, absolutely. That's because it's a magical tool and I use it in my craft. Do I own a pointy witch's hat? Yes, but I don't tend to wear it in public. I wear it sometimes on my videos because it was a gift from one of my students. And I do wear it in my spiritual practice. Also keeps my head warm when I'm a bit cold. Do I wear a lot of black? Do I wear spiritual jewellery? Yes and yes. Do I... Do I consider myself to be actively witchy on the outside? I mean, I am a witch, so all the time I consider myself to be a witch, but am I a stereotypical one? I personally would say no, but if you looked at me, my style, saw me walking down the street, you might say, oh yeah, she's definitely a stereotypical witch. So, either be holder, guys. Two, do you own a cat? Oh, no. <laughs> I did, I owned a cat years ago, her name was Spooky. I did not name her, my nieces did. And she was a beautiful black cat. She actually looked a bit like a leopard. If you caught her in the sun, she had these black spots underneath her fur. So it was like black on black pattern. And she had these beautiful blue crystal eyes. It's so unusual for a black cat. Um, and I absolutely loved her. But I lived in a flat at the time and she started to go a bit, you know, batshit crazy <laughs> being in a flat. She wanted more space to run around. And for her own health and well-being, I ended up rehoming her to a lovely family. She completely fell in love with the young little boy of that family. And I believe now he's her cat. Like, he sleeps in her room. She plays with him. So, so yeah, so she's happy and healthy, and that's what matters. So, currently, no, I don't own a cat, but I used to. Do you wear a lot of black clothing or witchy clothing? Um, I wear a lot of black, yes guys, I'm a rock chick and I tend to wear a lot of gothy clothing or at least I gravitate towards that, so stuff like this is quite common for me, I tend to wear this quite a bit. Do I wear witchy clothing? I suppose that depends what you mean. Do I wear tie-dye, hippie stuff that can be quite witchy and spiritually? Not regularly, but I do get drawn to that clothing, I tend to wear it more in the summertime because it's loose and free-flowing and not as hot in, in the hot weather. But I do typically wear it every day. So yes, I wear black clothing. No, I would say I don't wear witchy clothing. Why did you become a witch? Knowledge. <laughs> this is, I always give the same answer to that question. Why did I become a witch? Well, knowledge. I wanted to learn. I wanted to study. I wanted to grow. I wanted to spiritually develop. And the only way to do that is to study and learn the craft or an earth-based religion. So becoming a witch for me was about knowledge, study and understanding. So that was the reason I became a witch. When did you realise you were a witch? I have always been a witch, guys. It wasn't an epithic moment for me where I went, aha, I'm a witch. It was more a, 
I've always been a witch. And when I finally started actually studying witchcraft, that was a more of a, oh, I've been doing this forever, my entire life. So I've always been a witch. I just didn't know what the, the word was for it. I didn't know what to call it. Now I do. It was more of a, a that situation for me. What is your favourite witchy holiday? Oh, it's so easy, guys. Halloween. I love Halloween. It's my absolute favourite time of year. If you spoke to my partner, he's obsessed with Christmas. He loves all Christmas lights, getting the Christmas tree out, opening presents. He's like a child. He gets so excited that the day is up to Christmas and he barely sleeps. But for me, it's Halloween. I start prepping. I start making all of my mixes. I start carving pumpkins. I decorate my entire house. I pick out a spooky outfit to wear on Halloween. I pretty much wear that all day. I watch horror movies. I eat pizza and gorge myself on sweets and chocolate. Answer the door to all the trick or treaters. Absolutely love it. I'm really big on Halloween, guys, and I tend to celebrate it over the course of three days because I do the Day of the Dead as well on November first. And also, I celebrate Hecate a lot in November and you know the start of that for me is the beginning of November so I have a lot to do over the first sort of three days over Halloween into November so that's the busiest time of year for me but it's also my favourite type of year. What type of witch do you consider yourself to be? I'm an eclectic witch guys. This is a type of witch that picks and chooses lots of different bits and pieces from lots of different spiritual paths, faiths and religions, any earth-based path and anything that resonates with me, I pull it into my own path, my own craft, and I make it my own. So if you put 10 eclectic witches in the room, we would all be completely different. The reason for that is because we've all picked and chosen different things that resonated with us. We have different training, different knowledge, different background experience. So as an eclectic witch, everyone who says they're an eclectic witch they are going to be the most unique version of themselves. No one else is going to be exactly the same type of eclectic witch because we are all different. So I am an eclectic witch. I love to study as much as I possibly can. I don't let anybody tell me that I can't do something. I don't believe in that. At the end of the day, we should all be sharing knowledge. We should all be salvaging this knowledge that's been lost for years and years and we should be sharing it, spreading it, keeping it alive in our spirituality. So I don't, I don't believe in not studying something. I, if I want to study it, I will and I won't let anyone tell me otherwise and that is part of my path. Have you ever been part of a coven? The answer is yes guys, I've been part of several covens. I actually ran covens for quite a long time as well. So my first coven that I joined I was 14 and a half, nearly 15 and that's quite young because most witches are not allowed to join a coven until they're 16 and above and in some countries they don't allow it till they're 18 so usually you're taught traditionally within your family setting and then you join a bigger group of people when you've got a better understanding and you're more dedicated and serious about the craft so joining a coven usually there was an introduction or um, there was some kind of a test or a trial that you had to go to to prove that you were ready to join that coven, that you were serious and that you were dedicated. These days, it's a bit more relaxed. You can look up covens online, you can join them digitally, you can join various different groups on YouTube which consider themselves to be covens. There are bloggers out there that now uh, join covens. There's, there's all sorts of different ways to be part of a coven without physically having to go and meet up with people, um, especially at the moment with the virus going on. So yes, I've been part of a coven and I have actually taught covens and led covens as a high priestess. I don't do it anymore, guys. I quickly realised with covens that they're quite structured and rigid and you have to conform to the rules and regulations of that coven. A lot of which has struggled with that, a lot of which is weren't as dedicated and that's not because they didn't want to be. It's because life is complicated, guys. We all have responsibilities and sometimes life throws us a curveball. So, um, so I, in myself, realised I didn't want to be part of a coven anymore stopped being part of other people's covens, closed down the covens that I ran myself and ended up forming a much more relaxed spiritual group. And if you are someone out there considering a coven, my advice is to just find a relaxed spiritual group, a group of people that just want to learn from each other and meet up once in a while, 
swap information, recommend books, talk about spells, um, make sigils together and just be really, really relaxed about it. It doesn't have to be a coven where you're practicing rituals and big spells all the time. It can be something more relaxed and I found that better because you can come and go as you please, you can learn, learn from each other. It's not too structured so there's no specific leader, there's no you know, consequences for breaking the rules or not following the rules, etc. So I personally prefer relaxed spiritual groups to an actual coven. Do you have a favourite spell? Ooh, um, it's a good question, guys, but I, I think the answer is no. I don't have a favourite spell. I have spells that I really enjoy casting. Um, one of those is the self-love spell that I do. It's the spell I always recommend to most of my clients, despite most of them choosing not to have it. It's the best love spell that you can ever possibly do. The reason being because it works on you, not the outside world. It changes the way you see yourself, the way you perceive yourself, hold yourself. It teaches you uh, to love yourself again, have some self-respect, stand your ground, and it changes your energy so much that the world around you starts to resonate with that energy in a positive way and draws in all those positive things that you've been desiring a long time. So if you've been single for a long time, rather than cast a love spell on a person or cast a spell to attract a lover, if you cast a self-love spell, what you'll find is people will naturally be drawn to you anyway, and that is the best type of spell. So self-love spell is probably one of my one of the spells I do enjoy to do, but it's not a fave. Um, I did used to cast a spell regular on my sister when we were growing up. That one was a chill out spell. She was um, quite an aggressive little individual uh, when we were growing up and she had a fiery temper and if you crossed her, whoa. <laughs> so I used to cast this chill out spell on her and I had great results on that every time I did it and she would just be, hey, <laughs> like calm, peaceful, tranquil and it was great. Um, so they're two spells that I like to do quite quite a bit. I don't tend to do the chill out one anymore on her, but there are obviously other people who have now requested that. It's quite a popular spell that I've written, so I get asked for that quite a bit. Um, but no, I don't have a specific favourite spell that I like to cast. Do you believe in reincarnation? Absolutely, guys. I have done a lot of past life regression. I've discovered a lot of my own past lives. If I have a past life, clearly I've reincarnated. So yes, I do believe in re reincarnation. Um, I used to teach how to go back into your past lives and learn about that and then in conjunction with that I have another friend of mine teaches um, soul retrieval so how to collect pieces of your shattered soul that you've left behind in past lives in order to become whole again in this one and to help you grow as an individual spiritually and get over any patterns of negativity that have appeared in this lifetime so we used to do that quite a bit together and it's something I'm hoping to do again in the future, but yes, I do believe in reincarnation. Do you have a god or a goddess that you work with? Um, yes, I do. I have several actual guys. Um, the very first ones were pagan based, so the, the triple god and the triple goddess. So I have statues of each. To me, they just represented the male and female force in the universe. I didn't particularly give them any names or anything like that. That's just what they represented. And when you brought them together, it was a Kashic energy, which is unity and tranquility and balance. So I used to work a lot with that energy when I first started in paganism before you know, going further and deeper down my path. Now I have specific deities that I do work with, and I will tell you some of them, but not all of them. One of my major deities that I work with, and I've had a relationship with her since I was 13 years old, is Hecate. She is probably my number one goddess. I did not choose her, she chose me, and she made it very clear that there was, like, I couldn't reject her. She was just like, no, <laughs> I have chosen you. <laughs> so... I, I had to learn to live with her, I had to kind of learn to accept her, embrace her in my life, recognise her energy, so I did a lot of studying and research of her, built a relationship with her and eventually started to realise that she's always been in my life in lots of other ways. I realised all these changes that she'd done, how she'd helped me and assisted me without me even knowing it and then of course there was lots of other spiritual connections I had that linked to Hecate that I didn't even realise at the time until I really looked into her. So I've worked with her for an extremely long time. Uh, recent deities that I've started forming bonds with has been Persephone. Um, she came to me at the end of working through a book on dark goddesses and that was actually a shadow magic book. So the idea was you were working through it and being stripped away bare 
and being broken down in order for you to understand the faults and flaws with yourself and at the end you do this ritual and one of the deities that you've worked with throughout that can walk forward and request to work with you and I honestly thought it was going to be Hecate because there is a chapter of her on that and I thought well I'm already working with her it makes sense but at the end it was actually Persephone who came to me so I started building a relationship with her the other deity that recently came to me this year actually so 2020 is uh, Santa Morte so I've been starting to form a relationship with her and that's been interesting for me because I don't know an awful lot about uh, Mexican culture so I've been looking into that I love the day of the dead but I, beyond that I haven't really looked too much into that spiritual path so I've been on this journey to look into that and expand my craft into that area of witchcraft so that's been quite interesting. I do have some um, gods that I work with as well. I've worked with Herm Hunter quite a bit. Um, I worked with I worked work with the Horn God as well as the regular triple God. I I worked with Hades before. Um, I worked with Hades several years ago actually. He I worked through a book called The Witch's Book of the Dead and he was one of the deities that you could work with in that and again there was a ritual in that where at the end one of them would kind of come forward and Hades was that one and then it's interesting how recently Persephone who's his wife came forward so it's like a dual aspect there. I also notice a lot with my own deities that they all seem to be quite dark or related to the underworld. It seems to be a bit of a pattern with deities that I'm collecting lately. But again, it's to do with your path and your craft and what resonates with you. So the right deities will come forward. And I actually get that question quite a lot. How do you choose a god or goddess? But I didn't choose any of mine, guys. All of mine found me, chose me, and came to me when I was ready. I'm a very firm believer in when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I think it's the same with higher forces. When you are ready, they will come to you. Don't seek them out. Don't force a relationship. Don't demand them to be in your life. Just slowly, casually start trying to work or understand them or make offerings to them and see which ones will resonate with you and if any come to you on your own even if the ones you're not thought of give them a chance because honestly you're probably fine they will work much harder for you they will want to be in your life more because they've chosen to come to you ones that i forged relationship with on my own ones like Aphrodite and Freya because I work a lot of love magic for clients so I needed to work with higher forces and love so those were some of the energies that I worked with I also work with a angel called Camille he's a love angel so depending on the spell that I'm being asked for depends on which energy I'll work with out of those three and um, I've worked with Cupid before as well so it just depends really you can forge a relationship yes but I personally believe the best ones are ones that have come to you and asked for a relationship with you so I will do a separate video on God and Goddess um, energy and magic and picking and choosing gods and goddesses but I just thought I'd add that in on the end since I've been asked the question so that's it guys that's all 11 questions that you've asked me but as I say I'm sure there's more and um, if you do have any pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to do another video to answer them for you so thank you very much for watching I do hope you enjoy it and that you've learned a little bit more about me and my craft if you'd like to see more of these videos then give me a thumbs up click the bell button so YouTube will tell you when my next video comes out if you'd like to see any of my spell work any of my altars and any of my rituals you can see them on Facebook Instagram and Twitter and if you support me on Patreon Patreon. Thank you very much, guys. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Blessed be, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks again. Bye.